For long straight cuts, a circular saw is hard to beat. And it's a tool with a few more tricks up its sleeve. This tool is for cutting primarily wood. And the size of the blade is specific to your saw. Five and a half, seven and a quarter, and nine and a quarter are some common sizes. You can get some serious work done on your projects with this tool. So you have to know what you're doing. When you're changing the blade, make sure the tool is unplugged and your finger is off the switch. Look for a lock that prevents the blade from spinning. Use a wrench to loosen the bolt holding the blade in place. Use the right blade for the density of the material you're cutting. As a general rule of thumb, you'll get a smoother cut from blades with more teeth per inch and a faster, rougher cut with less teeth per inch. You can adjust the angle to cut beveled edges. You'll line up to cut your line using the guide on the shoe. You can also adjust the depth and match the thickness of the surface you're cutting into. For example, if you needed to cut out a section of damaged underlayment without damaging the subflooring. Start the saw and then bring it to the surface. Hold it firmly down with both hands and push it forward at a pace that lets the blade cut without slowing. Try to keep the motor facing the larger section of the board or the section that isn't falling away when it's cut. This keeps the base plate and the weight of the saw supported. This is a tough tool to control without a surface to work against. So it's better to use a reciprocating saw or another type of specialty saw for overhead cuts. Kickback can happen if you use the saw incorrectly. If the blade isn't aligned or becomes pinched or bound in the cut, it can suddenly jump up toward you. Here's some other things to look out for. Setting the cut depth is very important for control. At the right depth, you shouldn't see more than one of the blade teeth below the surface that you're cutting. Don't use dull blades. And don't let the board you're cutting sag. To prevent this, support the panel near its edges and near the cut. If you're cutting using sawhorses, don't cut between them. Set it up so the shorter piece will fall away. If you'll be cutting plywood, paneling, decking, or lumber, you'll want a circular saw. There are even specialty blades for cutting cement siding. When you make cross cuts against the grain, this is the tool you'll use. For instance, cutting two by fours to length. A rip cut goes along with the grain. A straight edge comes in handy for longer cuts. You can even clamp several pieces together to cut them all the same size. Here are some more helpful tips. Always wear eye protection and use a dust mask or hearing protection where it makes sense. The blade protrudes on this tool, so keep it clear and don't wear loose clothing or jewelry that can get caught in the tool. Put the good side of the surface down to prevent splintering. For the tips, advice, and tools you need, visit your neighborhood Ace. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks.